41 in the book of Genesis. Amen. And as you're getting that, and as you're all resting to your feet, amen, amen. And start recording that. Lord, thank you so much, sir. Father, we bless your name for blessing us. Uh, it's time that we come and to share your word with your people. Father, I realize that I can't do this on my own. I need your strength and your power. Oh, God, so I surrender myself and I submit my will over to your will. Be glorified in my life in the name of Jesus. Someone needs to hear a word today. So you do it, Father. You do it for your glory. You, you get glory unto yourself. I thank you for this place of worship. Not so much the building, but, Father, the buildings that are seated here, the buildings that are watching, oh, God. Those are the place of worship, so oh God, and I pray right now for every heart and every mind that is being attentive to your word on today. Use me mightily in the name of Jesus, that your word will go forth with power, with clarity, with conviction, and authority. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ I do pray, and the people of God said, amen. amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Listen, listen, you're going to leave that there just for a minute, Jordan. Listen, I just want to set the stage for you. We've been talking about Joseph, and we know the story of Joseph, how uh, Joseph was uh, the youngest of his daddy's children in uh, Jacob, uh, Israel, and uh, how it was that uh, his brothers despised uh, Joseph because he was his daddy's favorite. And uh, you know the story. The story goes on how they, Joseph had a dream that he was going to be over them, and they didn't like that, and you know, so they sold him into slavery, and while he was in slavery, we talked about him being in Potiphar's house, and how he had challenges taking place in Potiphar's house because of Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph. We read the story, lied on Joseph, said he tried to sleep with her, and she was the one to be an aggressive person, but Joseph, with the integrity of God, said, I can't do this thing. He ran, but he left his coat behind. Do you know and understand you can't leave stuff behind? So, so Ashley, so, so the story goes to tell us that uh, uh, he ran away and she told a lie and Potiphar had him put into prison. But while he was in prison, the Bible says that God even gave him favor while he was in prison. Isaiah, so much so that the captain of the guards gave him full reign to do whatever he wanted to do in the prison. So we get down and then here it is, Pharaoh. Pharaoh has a cupbearer and a chief baker. They done made Pharaoh mad for whatever reason. That the Bible doesn't say what they did, but he was so mad, I say, he put them both in jail. Mm -hmm. Happened to be in the same prison, happened to be in the same jail that Joseph had control over. And the Bible said that these two men, the cupbearer and the, the baker, had dreams. And nobody could interpret the dreams, but Joseph said, listen, I... God is the only one that can interpret it. Just tell it to me, amen, and the spirit of God that's in me will reveal it. And y'all know the story, how it was the cup bearer. It, 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 the cup bearer said, they said that he was going to be restored to his position, yeah. right? But the chief banker, he wasn't going to be restored. Instead of his head being lifted up, his head going to be cut off. Yes. But watch this. Joseph says to the cup bearer, he said, I'm telling you this. I'm giving you this interpretation. He said, but when you get restored, don't forget about it, brother. Uh, don't don't forget me. Don't forget me. Just remember me because I'm in here and I don't belong in here. I, he was truly one of the brothers that said, I didn't do it. He was legit. Well, how many of you know that the cupbearer forgot all about Joseph? And the Bible says in Genesis 41 and chapter 1. Y'all stay with me. For the New International Version. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. When out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleep fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. Woo. He fell asleep again in a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. 
The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. And Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dream, but no one could interpret them for him. The chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, here, here it is, today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants, and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And the things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was impaled. In other words, his head was cut off. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Watch what Joseph said. Look what Joseph said. Joseph said, I cannot do it. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Listen, I want to talk to you this morning from a subject It had to happen. And from a subtitle, watch this, from a subtitle, I want to talk to you Behind the scenes. All right? Y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit. God works, Deacon Rich, behind the scenes of our lives uh, to make his work go forward. So many times we don't understand uh, why circumstances, why... Hmm, Hear this, certain delays take place. I said to the leadership on last night on our meeting, and I believe I said it this past Wednesday, sometimes there are some divine delays that happens, Isaiah. There's some divine delays that happen, and we don't understand why they happen. You know what, there, there's, not a, there's, not a, there's not a day that goes by. Mother, when our plans aren't changed by circumstances beyond our control. There's not a day that goes by that our plans, our plans aren't changed. Yesterday, can I just, let's just, yesterday, Brandon's plan was to get on his motorcycle, come by for a visit, and go home. His plans were changed, Ashley, because the rain and the storms came down. So now instead of him riding, he had to get a ride. But it was, it was a divine delay. Because who may know what, what may, have tried to, may have taken place had he enrolled on that motorcycle in the rain. Yeah. Right. See, here's the thing. This ain't a part of my notes, but here's the thing, beloved. You got to understand that you got to look at delays as something that God is trying to do in your life. Yeah. He wants you to take the time and stop mm -hmm. and think and always still trust in him. Yeah. Right. Stop getting upset when things don't happen the way that you think because you, you, you got to know and understand this is, we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. That when things don't happen our way, Wendy, listen, God, you're in control. All right. I don't need, listen, listen, so you remember those uh, uh, bumper stickers the net that used to have? God is the co pilot. No! He ought to be the pilot. And you ain't the co pilot, you just ought to be the passenger. Because, watch this, if you are the co-pilot, here you go, then that means the pilot is going to give you control over, over the plane or the ride that you're on. Uh -huh. And if that was the case, then he wouldn't be in control at all. Help me this morning. Amen. Beloved, listen, we got to learn. We got to learn. We must learn to live life on purpose. Yes. We have to live life on purpose. I see you, Shannon. Listen, listen, let me help you understand because if, watch this, if John 3.16 is the most recognizable verse 
in the entire Bible. Y'all know John 3.16. What for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but would have everlasting life. Then Romans 8.28 is surely in this the next uh, most popular verse, most recognizable verse in the Bible because Romans 8 and 28 says, watch this, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Understand something, beloved, that we as believers, we as Christians, yeah, we love this verse, Deacon S. Farrell, because it says to us that everything, uh, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the ugly, talk to me this morning, that happens in our life will be used by God for a what? A good purpose. And while we know that Romans 8 and 28 is comforting, you need to know and understand, beloved, that that does not tell us all that we need and want to know. Uh, it doesn't tell us what the good purpose is, mother. Uh, for what purpose is God orchestrating all the events in my life? Why is it that I'm going through what I'm going through? Why? The answer is in verse 29. Because in verse 29 of Romans chapter 8, it says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined, ah, my God, there it is, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, listen, listen, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. The word of God says, Paul says, we are predestined. That word predestined uh, comes from the Greek word pre, 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 -rizzo, pre -rizzo, meaning to be predetermined or to decide beforehand. Yes. So you got to understand something, beloved, that what you and I are going through has been designed beforehand mm -hmm. to bring glory and praise and honor, uh, Deacon Gibbs, uh, into our lives. you got to understand that God's purpose is to, here it is, here it is, Dr. Wanders, to conform us to his son. Our lives uh, follow the same pattern of testing that Jesus followed. Because in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, the word says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience, watch this, by the things which he suffered. Somebody say suffered. See, as Jesus proved his sonship by his obedience, we are conformed, here we are, we are conformed to his image by our, 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 our calamities that we go through, the struggles and the testing that we go through, the suffering that we go through. We're being conformed to look, and that word conform means to just look like it, to be in similarity of it. Amen. So we know how to... The word of God lets us know if we want to reign with him, we got to do what? We got to suffer. Ah, oh, help me this morning. So whether this day is good, Brandon, whether this day or bad, is bad in your sight. It has moved you and I, listen, closer to the image of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I, I just want to look more and more like him. Amen. I'm not talking about my physical appearance. I'm talking about my heart. Amen. I want to be able to love like Jesus loves. I want to be able to forgive like Jesus forgives. Talk to me, somebody. I even want, listen, I don't want, I don't want to hear this, but listen, I even want to be able to do miracles just like Jesus did. Because before he left, he told his disciples, listen, these things that I do, you're going to be able to do it them even greater. So guess what? Watch this, Deacon Esferel. So guess what? When somebody come in here sick, we ought to be able to lay hands on them. And in the name of Jesus, they ought to be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's why I'm looking at Ashley right now. Glory to God. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The image. When I look at a wife sitting right there, hey amen. A couple of weeks ago, she couldn't even raise up both of her hands. But because of the prayers of the saints, the image. I want to be conformed. Hallelujah. To his likeness, Pastor Norton, I want to be conformed. I need to be conformed. So, 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 let's take this thing a little further. Uh, there are some things, Wendy, watch this, that take place behind the scenes of our life. Let me help you understand this. Uh, in, 
in the motion picture business, uh, we got to understand that the, uh, in, this, in the motion pictures, uh, the director, get this, the director already knows uh, in his mind how a picture is supposed to turn out. It's in the director's mind. Get this. And, and I did some studying, Marcel, and I found out a few little secrets that you may not be aware of when it comes to making a movie and things that take place behind the scenes. One of the things that's very interesting to know, Janae, is that uh, background actors, background actors, those are the people, watch this, those are the people uh, that the director has that they help to complete a scene. You ever watch, you ever watch whatever show that you watch? We like to watch the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> and you ever notice when they're in certain areas and there's a whole bunch of people around and people just, and they look like they're talking, Isaiah. Uh, they look like they're talking. They look like they're having conversations. Uh, but, but here it is. What they're doing is they're faking, they're, they're mouthing fake conversations. They're mouthing fake conversations. They're laughing slightly, they're laughing slightly, and they're, listen, they're avoiding eye contact with the camera because they don't want people to know that they're having a fake conversation. Ooh, that's good right there, Brandon, because you gotta, you gotta be careful, beloved, about the background people in your life. Those folk that are having fake conversations, they, it seems, yeah, the mouth is moving and sound may sometimes be coming out, but they ain't saying nothing worth nothing in your life. Amen. You gotta be careful, the background people. Yeah, Woo. Yeah. Oh my God, my God, my God. All right, let, let's move on, let's move on. Uh, not only uh, the background actors, but watch this. Every so often, the director and the crew what they do is they shoot a raw footage material. They shoot raw footage material. But not all of the scenes, get this, make it to the final cut. Not all the scenes make it to the final cut. Uh, that's why there's, there, there, there's often an extended version of a movie that comes closer to showing the audience the director's true version by elevating the original to new heights. Get this, get this. Elevating the original to, to new heights behind the scenes. You don't see what God is doing behind the scenes. You don't understand why you are where you are behind the scenes. But God come told me to come tell you this morning. He's preparing you for elevation. Y'all missing this. He's preparing you for elevation. And some things, watch this, some things that are on, on the director's cut. Listen, there's certain, certain parts of the movie that get put on the floor and you never see it anymore. Some things that the Lord is right now cutting some things out of your life to get to the big screen. Oh, y'all missing this thing. Amen. See, because watch this. Some people wouldn't receive your word, Deacon Sam, if they knew the full picture of you. But God said, I'm cutting out some stuff so when people see you, they don't see you, but they see me working through you. Oh, that's good right there, brother. That's good. Ah, I might have to look at this myself. My goodness. Uh, man, man. Let me let me get this other one real quick. Listen, if you watch, get this. I, this, this 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 blew my mind, Lady Linda. If you happen to watch a scene that takes place at night, and especially especially if it's, it's if it's a scene where a car is driving, next time you watch a good movie, pay attention to that scene because for the most part, the person that's driving down the road, the the road is going to be wet. Well, why does the road be wet? Because the director knows that there's more light that comes off of the surface of the wet pavement of the wet road to help produce your business. What are you saying, Pastor? I need you to know and understand that in order for you to shine like God wants you to shine, there has to be some rain that falls in your life in order to reflect the light you do know that the Bible said, Jesus said that you are the light of the world. Yes. Woo! Yes. That's good. Only way doctors can flee is the light has to shine through. 
Ah, uh, let me go on. It had to. Had to happen. It had to happen. And you got to understand something, beloved, that sometimes in filmmaking and just like in our lives, it's a long, complicated process. Ah, uh, but it takes, a, it takes a team of hard work to fulfill the purpose. It takes the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to work in all of our lives. Amen. Amen. To create, watch this, watch this, watch this, digging us around. To create the masterpiece that God has designed for us to be. You do know each and every one of you are masterpieces. Hallelujah. You, you, listen, can I, can I say it like I want to say? You're more than a Picasso. <laughs> You're more than a Rembrandt. You are the creation of a most high God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me move on. Let me move on. So, so listen, as we as we look, I got a good good few more minutes. As we look at our text and we look at the life of Joseph, I want you to I want you to think about this. Watch this. I want you to consider what had to happen. Mm. For Joseph uh, to be brought before Pharaoh uh, to interpret his dream. Things that had to happen. Pastor Norton, listen. First thing that had to happen, hear this. Potiphar's wife had to wrongly accuse Joseph. Amen. Yeah, it had to happen, Brad. Amen. She had to wrongly accuse Joseph. And then Joseph had to. Somebody say had to. Had he to. had to be in prison. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Then the keeper of the prison had to. Somebody say had to. to. Y'all won't get this in a minute. Had to favor Joseph. And then Joseph had, had to. to. There you go. Mm -hmm. Be given free range in the prison. Mm -hmm. Potiphar's butler and baker had to. had to be thrown into the same prison as Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph had to. Meet them and, and be present the day both were disconcerted about their dreams. Mm -hmm. And then butler his dream for nearly two years and then the butler ha, be present the day Pharaoh's dreams went uninterpreted. Then Pharaoh be willing to bring a prisoner into his court to try to interpret his dream and then Joseph receive the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream from God. It had to happen that way. you're going through right now. Now I'm going to be finished. Yes, yes, yes. But you got to say to yourself it had to happen. Yes, yes. Tell yourself and point to yourself saying it had to happen. Yes, yes. Woo! Yes, yes. Because God is orchestrating this thing in my life. Yes, just to bless us. Just to perfect his will. Yes. So it can be done in my life. It had to happen. Yes. Actually sometimes we don't understand why you had to go through what, what you've been through. But guess what? It had to happen. Yes. To bring... Woo! I hear the Holy Spirit saying to get you closer to him. He said, yeah, you knew me, but now you really know who I am. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It had to happen. Isaiah, I'm sorry that what happened in your life, but guess what? It had to happen. Because guess what? It had it not happened. You might have went down the wrong road, but see, said, now, I'm bringing you to a place that I want you to be. It had to take place, son. Woo! My God, my God. I'm still moving in this house. Oh, Janae, I know you went through a hard time, baby. But God said it had to happen. We don't understand why you took your child, but it had to happen. For him to get glory out of your life. It had to happen. Things take place behind the scenes that we don't know nothing about. But Deacon Wadgers, it had to happen. It had to happen. And I'm, I don't know about you, because I done been through some pain. Some things because I was hard-headed. But guess what? Even that, I heard the Holy Spirit say that it had to happen, son. Because I needed you to be more aware and to be strengthened by what you've gone through because now I'm taking you to a higher height than me. I'm about to elevate you. But what you went through, guess what? It had to happen. It had to happen. My God. For his perfect, get this, get this, get this, beloved. For his perfect will to be done in our life. It had to happen. It had to happen. Listen, I'm done. I'm done. I pray. Hallelujah. I pray. Uh, Pastor McGrady, I pray that whatever it is that you're going through right now, my brother, <laughs> understand that God is working it out for your good. <laughs> my God. The Bible says that we can, we may endure for a night, 
but joy is coming in the women gotta take place but joy is coming in the morning don't you know and understand it has to happen son glory to God and here, here it is listen I don't know who I'm talking to but listen whatever you're dealing with don't you worry about it that God has it all in control he said I am the first and the last I'm the beginning and the end he said, I done wrote the book chapter verse by verse in your life. Woo. And watch this. He said, from the end to the beginning. In other words, see, we think that things ought to start in the beginning with God. God said, no, I knew you from the ending first. To the beginning. My God, my God. Somebody needs to know that he is all that he said he is. Huh? When, when Moses uh, was talking to God, and he said, God told him to go down and talk to the children uh, of Israel. And they're going to say, well, who is it that sent me? Mm. God said, just tell them, I am sent you. That's all you need. I am. It's working things out in your life. I am. It's a healer. I am. It's a deliverer. I am. Is your strength. I am. Is your provision. Hear me this morning. It had to happen, guys. <laughs> and, and listen, can I just say this? <laughs> he ain't finished. He's not finished perfecting none of us. He's not per finished perfecting. I was sharing with my son on yesterday how I seen, how I see how God, he, he, he's orchestrating his life. Yeah. And sometimes, and I shared this with Brandon yesterday. Here it is. Watch this. That sometimes, beloved, in order for us to get to the place where God has to have us to be, we have to go do some crushing. Yeah. We have to go do some pressing. The oil, the anointing yeah. that flows, amen, yeah. that comes from the oil of the olive tree. Amen. The only way the olive, the oil can come from the olive, it has to be pressed. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! If you expect to get the anointing, you expect to go through the pressing. Yeah. But even in the pressing, there's an aroma that comes off of your life. Yeah. My God, my God, who am I helping this morning? Uh -huh. yes, Lord. Yes. Don't despise the pressing, mm -mm. but embrace it. Because you got to know and understand that God is working. I don't understand it right now, but it had to happen. Yeah. Had to happen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Somebody said, somebody said it was a song. Dr. Wilder said, uh, he's so high that you can't get over him. Yeah. He's so low that you can't get under him. He's so wide that you can't get around him. But would you, go, what, you must come in at the door. My God. My God. And he said, listen, watch this. I'm going to be finished. I promise you. But the Bible says, Jesus says, listen, I am the good shepherd. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> My sheep come in and I went through the door. I'm the shepherd. And my sheep hear this to them. My sheep hear my voice. Not only do they hear my voice, but they know my voice. And the stranger, they will not hear. And here's, here's the wonderful thing about it. Here's the wonderful thing about it. The sheepfold, Deacon Wadrick's. There's a whole bunch of sheep in a sheepfold, and the shepherd knows each and every one of their names. Yes, he, don't, he don't get them mixed up like I do sometimes with our children. We only got four children. Sometimes I call Isaiah Daniel. Sometimes I call Daniel Andre. I still call Candace Candace. I can't confuse that one. But I get them boys mixed up from time to time. But all of the sheep that belong to the shepherd, he knows each and every one of us by name. And if he knows us by name, don't you think he knows what's going on in your life? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. It had to happen. It had yeah. to happen. Point to yourself and tell yourself, say, Self, Self. it had to happen. Yeah. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Listen, listen. I just want to thank each and every one of you for sharing with us on this morning. I mean, again, those that are watching Deacon Gibbs, I appreciate you so much. Pastor McGrady, New Unity, I appreciate you. Miss Gwynn, God bless you. Amen. Dr. Norton, bless you, my son, my friend, my friend, my brother. Amen. Donna, God bless you. And everyone that is watching, uh, Linda Jones, and, and, and there's so many of you watching, Miss Dot, Miss Dorothy, Brother Carey, God bless you, man. We had a wonderful time on this past Friday. Looking forward to do it again. Amen. Uh, uh, Carol, your lovely wife, God bless you. And everyone that is watching, thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you so very much. Uh, we love you with the love of Jesus. Listen, we love you to life. Nothing you can do about any of it. Amen. So we appreciate each and every one of you. We give God glory and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You can stop the recording for me, son. Thank you. And if we're still live, I just